Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we're going to take some daylight photo of the downtown area from the Griffiths Park in Los Angeles. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in Los Angeles and Paris, and I make one tutorial per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode, and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Welcome to Los Angeles and the Griffith Park. This is my dog, Caramel. We're going to be walking around the park and I'm going to take some photos. And I want to try to do some daylight shots. There's a lot of clouds today, which is very unusual for Los Angeles. And I want to see, you know, what kind of nice photos I can take during the afternoon. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon, a very overcast day. And that's something very unusual for Los Angeles. I want to see how we can make drama with this. So follow me in the Griffith Parks in Los Angeles. All right, so for this first photo, I'm gonna take a shot of downtown Los Angeles with, as a foreground element, the observatory. Uh, you know, one of the trickiest things when you do landscape photography is to have an interesting element as a foreground. And we have the chance from this view to get the observatory as a foreground element, downtown as a middle ground element, and then the sky, this amazing overcast sky as the background. I'm gonna shoot it HDR and, on, and I'm gonna shoot it by hand because I'm a lazy person, I don't like to take out the tripod if I don't need to. And right now, there's a lot of light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on manual and I'm gonna put my speed at 250 of a second. Why? Because when you bracket your photos uh, by hand during the day, uh, the first photo is, I, I like to have it at 250 of a second, which is a normal exposure. The underexposure is gonna be like um, probably 500 of a second, very fast almost no light, and the overexposed photo is gonna be at 180. However, if I'm starting my normal photo at like 100 of a second, which is fine, my overexposed photo would be like at one third of a second. So it'd be too slow or one tenth of a second, too slow and, my, and I might get a blurry shot. To make it clear, just when you do by hand HDR, shot at one 250 of a second. So I'm gonna go manual. My speed is at 250 of a second and um, I'm going to go into uh, on the Sony A7R on bracketing uh, and I'm going to do single bracketing, meaning I take one shot, it makes a photo, I take another shot, it makes a photo, I take another shot. So it's a bit, you know, I, I'm careful not to move so much, but usually, you know, then Photomatics, uh, you know, or Photoshop aligns them very well. So let's do the photo. So the first photo I had was, as I said, 250 of a second. The second one, the underexposed was at 1,000 of a second and the overexposed is at 160 of a second. And you know the limit that you get non blurry shot is about 150 of a second. So it was a safe bet to start at 250 of a second. Okay, so let's move and walk around the park, see if we can get some other spots. Sometimes it can be interesting to have like a foreground element like this dead tree and then the whole of downtown LA. And uh, it's a bit tricky because you have to be like at F12 or F13. Or sometimes what I do is I will focus just on the tree and then take another photo for the background and mix the focus in Photoshop. It depends how blurry it gets when you, when you, uh, sh you know, do your uh, focusing on the, on the tree itself. So I'm gonna try that. This is also a close -up view of the observatory in downtown. Maybe it's gonna fill the frame a little more. We'll see what works the best. Okay, on this photo, I really, I'm really gonna to try to shoot uh, this object, which I have no idea how it's called in English sharp and then uh, and then i'm going to focus on the background of, of the hollywood sign i'm going to make it sharp and then i'm going to see if i can mix both in photoshop it's an idea let's do it okay on this one 
This is actually the photo I was thinking of doing, which is just a little panel of downtown, the trees, and this way here, because I love the idea of showing from where you shoot something. There is a little way, it gives like a very interesting foreground element. As I was explaining, foreground element is really what I'm looking for. If there's even people coming by, I'm gonna wait that they come closer, take them so that we have the perspective of the size of human beings with downtown Los Angeles and this way here. All right, so I'm pretty happy with what I got. I think I'm gonna go black and white because there's really no colors and I have this one rule. If there is no color, I go black and white. So let's jump over to Lightroom and see what we got. All right, so I came back from the Griffith Park and here I am uh, ready to retouch the photos that I took. And, uh, and I think there's different projects that can be done. I'm only gonna show one in this uh, episode and I might show some others in future episodes. So let me go into uh, the full screen mode and let's uh, look over. So this is the first photo I wanted to take. That's the one. Uh, which I shot in HDR, that's the normal photo, that's the un underexposed photo, and that's the normal photo. I kind of moved a bit uh, between these photos. And sometimes I, I like to always you know, shoot HDR to be safe, but honestly, there is not such a big dynamic range in, in because you know there is no sun. So I don't think I'm gonna do uh, an HDR with it, but I just, you know, for safety, I'd like to have it. In the live video, I told you that I was using the HDR uh, single mode, which is you press one time and you do make you know a photo uh, normal, and you press another time, the underexposed, you press another time, you get the overexposed. But I discovered that th there is another mode called the continuous mode, which uh, is much better when you shoot by hand. So I advise you, if you've got the Sony A7R or A7S, to use that, which is you just press one time and it's going to take three photos because this way you're going to move less between photos. So let's talk about composition. I like that framing because you know we have. Um, Sorry, we have the uh, the observatory is the foreground, and we have you know the the clouds as a background. Okay, so that's that that's one option. Now I'm going to put a one on this one because I think I'm going to go for it. Uh, this one is very similar, and remember I was getting closer to it. See the difference between this photo and and this photo is I just I was moving down the path, and I think this one sort of fills in more the frame, meaning that uh, this one is like a bit too wide. There's a bit too much of the uh, hills you know a bit too much of the clouds and this one is a bit better so i think i'm going to jump over this one so i try different framing on this and um, then i tried this framing with the tree in the foreground and this in the background and that's the problem with wide angle honestly i don't like it i don't like it for two reasons because that tree here is not sticking out and it's really big and now the observatory is really small and downtown is really small and it's like what is the message of this photo is it just a tree so, you know, it was an idea, uh, you know, it could have been nicer if I would have probably stepped back a little bit, you know, like in 10, 20 meters and zoomed in a little bit so that the tree is not so big and the observatory is still big, you know. So this one I'm not going to go for, but I wanted to show you. So every time also, I, you know, I bracketed these photos in case I needed it. Okay. And then, um, then I did this series of, you know, shooting downtown and, um, and this uh, lens here, I don't know how you call this. Okay, that's the one where the lens is sharp, and that's the one where downtown is sharp. Uh, now, I've made a big mistake on this one because I tried to, in Photoshop, to stack the different focus to make one very sharp photo and didn't work because I moved too much on the shots, even on this one. So I think I'm going to go back there with a different light, and I, I'm going to do it on a tripod. Uh, to uh, blend different focus. I'll do another episode on that. You need to shoot on tripod. That's something I discovered. Uh, okay, now that's the final ones. I kind of like this one, you know, with like downtown uh, around with trees. So I'm going to put a one on this one. And um, and uh, I think I'm going to, yeah, and this is the panel I was going for. This is the first photo. This is the second photo. And this is the third photo. And I have a kind of lot of choices. I can take this photo, this photo, this photo, I, I like the idea of a panel of, uh, you know, so you can see the way and the people walking up and have a, an idea of, uh, of downtown LA from the Griffith Park. So I, th I think I'm gonna select all these photos, which is this panel, so I'm gonna right click, edit, and usually that's what I do, I just put like a rating of one, sorry, a rating of one on like my first selection. But for now and for this episode, I'm only gonna retouch this one because, uh, you know, it's a short episode and it would take too much time and I will do in further episodes, maybe other photos. So this photo I'm gonna retouch and 
it, it was an amazing overcast day, which is very unusual for Los Angeles, but the light is very boring. And see how this photo is kind of dark because even the normal exposure is kind of, I really shot making sure that nothing is burned in, in the clouds. So now if I, first I'm gonna get rid of that spot because it's really bothering me. Uh, I should have cleaned up my sensor first. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna clean up the spot. Boom, right. And then I'm gonna open up the shadows so that we can see here what, you know, a bit more the what's going on. But because that photo is so dark, I don't think I'm gonna, uh, oh, sorry, I missed, this is the exposure. I'm not gonna bring down the highlights as I usually do. I think I'm gonna leave it as such, and I'm gonna go do my white point. I'm just gonna move my white slider until I see something that I like. I think something like this, and then my black slider, something like this. Okay, so a very minimum retouch, but this one I wanna go for a dramatic black and white. As I told you in a live video, when the colors are like, you know, not so good, I always go for black and white. So I'm just gonna desaturate the photo, and I'm actually on this one, I'm gonna lower the contrast on the other side. I want to start off, and I always start off my black and white with a bit of a washed out gray. And the way to do that, that's why I did not go too much into you know plus 100 on the shadows minus 100 on the highlights you know and actually on this one i'm even going to minus the clarity on the overall photo i want something very smooth very light gray okay uh, next i'm going to take the crop tool i'm going to take the angle tool make sure my horizon is very very straight and then i'm just gonna i want to make it a little bit more panoramic but just a little bit more because i like more the you know, the movie uh, kind of look, and it's always more panoramic. Okay, so now it's very straightforward. Once you've got the watch out look, we can bring in the drama, okay? And for this, I'm just gonna take a gradient, uh, the gradient tool here. I'm gonna make a little gradient. And on this one, I'm just gonna lower the exposure. Okay, but I'm gonna make it strong. I want to make it like a vignette effect. I want the top of the clouds to be very, very, um, dark something like this same thing here i want the bottom of the photo to be very dark okay you know, not that much and on this one i'm just gonna back down voila so that's the starting point now we are ready for some more uh you see the photo is lacking of uh, of a true white point okay i might actually boost the white point by holding the alt key and going the whole way to white point oh my god i have to go this far to get a white point Okay, no, I'm gonna back it down to about what it was and I'm gonna do it different. I'm gonna take the radio filter and I'm gonna make a big circle here below the clouds. I'm gonna make sure that invert mask is on and my feathering is on and I'm gonna boost the highlights and the exposure because I wanna make that bottom of the sky uh, sort of, you know, more white and because I want the eyes of the viewer to go inside of the photo. Okay, and uh, next I'm gonna take a brush. And I want some of this grass here to be a bit brighter so they have a better contrast. For this, I'm gonna put the flow and density of my brush around 80, boost the exposure. And I think I wanna make this a bit wider, make my brush a bit smaller. And I just wanna brush here on, on the grass that's kind of visible and on the ways that you see here, okay? Something like this, and I'm just gonna boost the exposure. All right, a little bit. So, to, so just, you know, we have more contrast in the grass. Okay, now I wanna take care of downtown. And downtown, I'm gonna make a new brush. And on this brush, I'm gonna, same thing, I'm gonna boost the exposure, but I'm gonna boost the clarity. Remember how the overall photo had a lower clarity? I love clarity, but on the touch. Like, I don't want it everywhere. So I'm just gonna add a bit of clarity here in downtown, maybe make this a little bit brighter. Okay, and I don't want to add clarity here in the foreground just because um, grass, trees, and things like this is very high frequency textures. And I think when you add clarity, they kind of hurt the eyes. But that's just me. I like when it's a bit more soft. I don't like, I don't mind it so much on the building. But, you know, anyways, uh, I mind it on the grass and the trees. So before the brush stroke, after the brush stroke, it's coming to life. Okay, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go back to the brush stroke and I'm, so I, I'm always working with this basically three tools. Here's a gradient tool, you know, the radio filter and the brush to make things a bit more exciting. I'm gonna make a new brush and maybe add some clarity and exposure just on, on the, this spot here, on the, the star of the photo, which is the observatory, make it a bit wider. I'm gonna create another one and maybe I just wanna add even more white here, maybe on, on this part. And you know, I'm just, you know, 
And believe it or not, it seems to be a lot of retouching, but if you study all the, the old masters, you used to do the black and white, they, they used to put little circles everywhere saying, oh, plus three exposure here, minus three exposure there, plus 10%. And they used to do this. It's so easy to do it in, in Lightroom now. So now I kind of like the result. Let's see the before, before and after. So you can see the color in, in color is really nothing, but in black and white, it's kind of nice. Okay, now at this point, I've done my local stuff. I think I'm gonna just double click to put back the contrast to what it was and have it very contrast. And I'm gonna add some little vignetting effect here to make it even more dramatic. I love the idea of the sky. And you see now, because I did like a, a minus clarity, the clouds are, are not like HDR looking very contrasty. They're a bit puffy, I like that. If you think, might be my gradient, my, um, Gradient here might be a bit too much. I might make it a bit higher up. Okay, and honestly, at this point, I would look at other things, come back to it like in half an hour, and see if I would make a change on it. But I think it's a good start. It's a, it's a nice dramatic black and white of downtown Los Angeles from the observatory. You know, I would I would not mind having this on my wall. And uh, voila, so I hope you like this live episode. And I want to talk to you about my Paris in spring coming up in June, where I invite you to Paris to spend a whole week in me the price that you will see includes all the all the uh, the meals. There's about 14 very nice French restaurants, plus a full day in Mont Saint Michel with the bus, the hotel, uh, all the transportation in Paris, and all the different excursions we're going to be doing. It, what it, the only thing it does not include is your flight ticket and the hotel. I advise you to go for an Airbnb. You can get some great Airbnb in Paris and uh, spend a one week with me. Here is a little trailer about what we're going to be doing if you do come to Paris with me. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm very happy to be able to invite you again this year in my 2015 Paris in Spring workshop. This is something I did last year and it was a lot of fun. The idea is that you would spend a whole week with me in Paris, France, and I'm going to bring you to the best, epic, iconic locations in Paris where we're going to shoot the Eiffel Tower, we're going to shoot the Louvre, we're going to shoot the Seine River, we're going to go to the top of Notre Dame and shoot all the roofs of Paris. We're going to go to the top of the Tower of Tour Montparnasse and have an amazing view of Paris. Uh, I will bring you into some of the best spots. We are going to spend an entire day in Mont Saint-Michel. It's not Paris, but it's the second most amazing place to visit in France. It looks like a castle from uh, the Middle Ages, Game of Thrones. Plus, you're going to spend a whole all the lunches and dinner together in very nice selected French restaurant. So it's also a little foodie experience. And you will see, it's just a really fun experience. You will come out with great photos and uh, we're gonna have a lot, a lot of excitement together. So join me in this Paris in Spring 2015. Here is what some of the people last year had to say about it. The highlight of this trip was uh... I think probably getting up early in the morning. <laughs> Just the whole package, the entire experience. Just being around fellow photographers that have a love of photography. The photography level has moved up. My name is Michel Jodoin. I'm coming from Montreal. My name is Bert. I live in Florida area, Gainesville, Florida. My name is Rebecca Waters, and I'm from Southern California, around the Los Angeles area. My name is Mark Llewellyn, and I'm from uh, England. In everything you do, uh, the only thing important is passion. And I think this man's got first that passion and he has also the, all the generosity to transfer it to every student. This helped me as a photographer by uh, making me concentrate more on the photographs, the post-processing side as well as the taking, the taking the time to take the photographs. You know, as a photographer, these kind of things get you to another level. I definitely would recommend this to a friend. I would absolutely recommend this to anybody. This has been a fantastic experience. That, um, I would like, love to do again. Absolutely. I would recommend this workshop to anyone who's interested in photography, anyone who wants to see Europe or Paris. It's a wonderful trip. I would recommend this workshop to anyone I know interested in photography, a friend or no friend. <laughs> if you can afford it, go for it. And even if you can't, try to go for it.